Um, so there's a broad pessimistic consensus uh, among political scientists that the world's entered a period of democratic decline. And it's the concept of democratic backsliding which has really attracted most attention. It's a previously marginal concept which has now become a quite widespread paradigm. Sometimes described by different labels, democratic erosion, creeping authoritarianism, but the basic contours of the idea, which I'm sure you're familiar with, are quite widely agreed. It's a gradual process. It's led by democratically elected politicians. It takes the form of so-called executive aggrandizement, centralization and concentration of power. It's often led by a cohesive ruling party. It works in more or less predictable sequences, the so-called illiberal or populist playbook, first stripping away formal and informal checks and balances, capturing constitutions, courts, then partifying public administration, private media, the economy, building up patronage networks through what uh, Abby Innes has called party state capture. And then in the end, the elimination of institutional and media checks and balances skews democratic competition so much, helps the ruling party to win again and again and again, usually, that pluralism and competition are reduced so much that the regime is no longer a low quality democracy, but some kind of hybrid competitive authoritarian uh, regime. There are, as I think has been said, a number of problems with applying the backsliding paradigm widely. It's overstretched. And uh, Lucia Cianetti and I have, have written about this in a recent article in uh, Journal, of, uh, Journal of Democracy. Um, and there are two particular I would, uh, I would highlight. It reduces our discussion to a conversation about democracy moving backwards or moving forwards or staying still. And there are a huge number of cases, including the Czech Republic, which don't really fit the backsliding paradigm. They're residual. And there are too many of these to really uh, ignore. Most scholars have tried to apply the idea of backsliding to the Kachet case, and I know this because I'm one of them. And Czechia does have some of the features of paradigmatic cases like Hungary and, and Poland, the breakthrough of a populist party, populist president, governing party with aspirations to centralize power, to remove checks and balances. We, we, we know what Andre Babish dreams about uh, when he has time to sleep. Um, concentrations of economic and media power around the governing party and some analysis like that of VDEM suggests that there is a sequence playing out where rule of law and media plural, pluralism decline and that that is the first step into a pattern of syndrome, a pattern of democratic backsliding. So there is this family resemblance, but there are also other things that don't really work very well with the Czech case. Czech case, Czech Republic in democracy indices, here you see VDEM's measure of, of, of decline over 10 years has dropped, but it's dropped from a high rating to a slightly less high rating. It's more or less at the same point as the United States. It's very far away from the paradigmatic cases of Hungary and Poland. The governing party, even allied with the president, really lacks the political and electoral power to enforce major constitutional changes, to capture or disable major institutions in a systematic way. And it's populism, certainly Babish and Anna, there are, there are debates about this, but it's 
technocratic, it's flexible. It doesn't quite have the, what my former colleague uh, Jan Kubik calls the thickness to legitimate a drive in a illiberal direction. So family resemblance, but doesn't really fit. So if we're not going to think about Czechia in terms of backsliding, um, what is what of what is it a case? How do we think about Czech democracy? How do we research it? One option is to do more or less what we've been doing before and to think along the lines of Bakker and Sitter and say that more or less ordinary liberal democracy, perhaps a difficult democracy, but the problem is hollowing and not backsliding. The problem is participation, representation, accountability. What Andrew Roberts in his very fine book has called uh, the quality uh, of democracy. Now, I'm not sure that that's a good response either for the Czech Republic or indeed for uh, other countries. In this article, Bakken and Sitter rather interestingly compare Milos Zeman's actions in 2003 with those of Boris Johnson. I think we really need an answer to this question, which is posed by Dan Slater, which is how do we make sense of a case and a situation where the democratic game really has changed uh, in quite important ways? But democracy isn't collapsing and backsliding, but it isn't consolidating either. One way we could do this is to think in terms of a democratic political system which is in a sustained and continuous state of instability and polarization between liberal and populist forces, each of which enjoys a period of success, but never really uh, dominates. So Pushtikova and Guesti have the notion of illiberal uh, swerves. They argue that the swerving of Czech politics is culturally driven, uh, centering on challenges to national sovereignty, national identity. Dan Slater uh, himself, I should say, they, they also have the idea we need to think in terms of short episodes. And they do make the important point, which was made in the previous panel, that volatility and uncertainty could be seen as part of democracy, inherent to democracy. Dan Slater himself has a slightly different concept, which he calls uh, careening. And I should say careening is not a familiar word, even to most native speakers of English. I had to look in the dictionary to check exactly what it meant. And the metaphor is one really of a motor vehicle moving forward, but going dangerously and erratically from side to side, but still moving forward. It says that unsettledness is uh, endemic. Slater tends to see instability in careening as driven much more by social and economic tensions and inherent conflicts between the liberal and the democratic elements of a, of a democratic uh, system. So swerving is more about the occasional sharp turn in an illiberal direction. Kareening says that the process is more uh, systematic. So how could we test this? How could we apply this? It's, it's, it, uh, Slater's work is on Southeast Asia. He says Thailand is the strongest and most paradigmatic case. And the kind of indicators he says that we should look for in a careening process are populist disruptors, polarization, polarized camps making competing democratic claims. He, he doesn't like the populist camp, but he says they make legitimate democratic claims. Mass mobilization and counter mobilization, inter-institutional conflict, say 
president and parliament being in conflict, war of institutions, and frequent turnovers of government. Turnovers are supposed to be a sign of democratic robustness, robust competition, uh, but here they are part of democratic careening. So how does the Czech case measure up in, uh, in, these, in these terms? Well, populist disruptors, we certainly have them in the, in, in the form of uh, the elephant in the room, Babish, Anon, also Milos Zeman. Polarization, there is evidence of greater social and political polarization. Zeman and Babish are polarizing uh, figures. There's been a decline in uh, competition over social and, and economic issues. But we don't get mass mobilization between different social and political camps. We've seen mobilization, but Czech citizen mobilization is, is non-party or anti-party. And we don't have the kind of polarized blocks that Slater's Southeast, uh, Southeast Asian cases um, highlight. We certainly have competing democratic claims. There's a very long history of, of, of conversation and contestation about uh, Czech democracy. And we can say that the rise of corruption and anti-corruption as an, as an issue has in, accentuated that uh, and put issues around the nature of elites, the nature of the democratic political game, much more uh, on the agenda. Interinstitutional conflicts we haven't had. Babish and Zeman form a reasonably, seemingly happy tandem. And turnovers of, turnovers of, turnovers of government, well, not yet, but let's watch this year's elections. So just a, a few, if I can manage that. A few brief uh, conclusions. Um, the Czech, case of Czech democracy is a good test case for the limitations of the backsliding paradigm. The case where we have a family resemblance with backsliding cases, but not enough really as a lot of analysts agree, to properly um, classify Czechia as a case of, uh, of backsliding. The swerving and careening concepts both need refinement, and in particular, they need uh, good uh, measures. We need to distinguish normal instability, normal debates about and contestation around democracy, with the decisive change of game and instability that, um, that uh, Slater writes about. And there's mixed evidence of Czech democratic careening, which may mean that we don't have good enough evidence or good enough measures. It may mean that the concept needs to be changed or refined, or it may mean that Czech democracy is going to be best captured by uh, some other concept. And I think our problem really is that we have many concepts uh, and not enough cases. Okay, and that winds up my presentation, so thank you.